What's up guys, Carl here today. We're gonna to be going into Microsoft Teams to show you guys some of the features that you can use in Microsoft Teams. If you don't have a large organization or if you don't have access to Microsoft Teams through your school, let's go ahead and dive right into it. First things first, let's go ahead and open up Microsoft Teams. So, <clears throat> Once you open up Microsoft Teams in your personal account, you'll notice that you have an activity tab, a chat tab. Once you open up Microsoft Teams, you will notice that you have an activities tab, a chat tab, and a calendar tab. Now your activity tab is just basically gonna tell you anything that happens where you are mentioned and you can kind of see the instructions here. You will see mentions, reactions, and other notifications here. Now, of course, if you only if you just downloaded Microsoft Teams for yourself, you don't have no additional members added yet. This is something that you probably won't see right off the bat. Then you have your notification settings. So if you dive a little deeper into your notification settings, you can basically see show message previews, or you can do things like edit the chat. So changing up your banner and feed, or only show a feed or you can do banner on or banner off and then you can also do banner in feed or only show in feed as far as likes and reactions go next we have our calendar and in our calendar is where we can basically go here and start up a meeting so let's just say hey i want to do a meeting with carl huff so let's start up a meeting or you can kind of click on that to say i want to share this link so copy that link or you can share this link via email and you click here you get an email tab that will pop up here so microsoft teams is integrated with any of your microsoft outlooks so this basically is saying hey join teams meeting and you're invited so that is that and you can kind of click here to start a meeting so it'll just let you know that this meeting is now connecting and now you can do the same thing here. You can copy a link and share it to people that you want to have join this link. Or you can, sh you can share this via your Outlook calendar. You can share this of Google calendar, or you can just share it via default calendar. And my default calendar here is my Outlook calendar. So you can go ahead and then close that. Once it's ready to start the video, you can turn your camera off or on. You can mute your mic or you can share your screen. And when you share your screen, people watching your video feed will be able to see your screen as well. You can stop sharing your screen by just quickly doing, uh, clicking this right here, or you can do Control Shift and E, and that will stop sharing your screen. Now, while you're in the meeting, you have a few settings that you are access to. So first, you have your device settings. So this is basically letting you know that you can change your speaker, your microphone, or your camera. So in order to access the camera that you want when you're doing the meeting, you can click on the camera right here. So I just changed my camera. That's why the screen was originally black. And now I have access to this particular camera and people can see me through the camera. And if I wanted to switch up my microphone and the microphone that I'm currently using, I would do that by doing that. And now people can hear me through that microphone. And as far as the speakers are concerned, if I wanted people to hear me, which may create an echo if you don't do it right, you can change the speaker as well. So those just are a few of your device settings. You can close that out. And then let's just go here to meeting options. So once you go to your meeting options, you can say who can bypass the lobby, only me, or you can click on this and say everyone that way as people call in or enter into the call they are not sitting in the lobby so this is beneficial when you want to do some type of interview style or something like that so if you want people to sit in the lobby you just say who can bypass the lobby only me and then you can say who can present uh, if you're doing a interview you want to say only me but if you're doing some kind of technical interview and you want people to show you um, their skills or, or portfolios or any kind of thing that they want to share you can say everyone and then you can allow mic for attendees and you can allow camera for attendees so if you're doing something like a presentation style this is a good opportunity to go into your meeting options and just say 
I don't want anybody talking and I don't want anybody showing their videos while I'm doing my presentation. This way, you get an opportunity to eliminate any distractions while you're presenting. Let's go a little deeper. Next, we have meeting info. Meeting info is just something that you could do. So say there's a situation where you send out a mass email. Everybody has the link. Somebody just has so, just so happens to send you a chat or, or call you and say, hey, I deleted the email by mistake. Can you quickly send me that link so I can join the call? This is an instance where you can kind of go to meeting info, copy, join info, and just send that info over to whoever may have missed the link or misplaced the email or the invitation. Next, we have some gallery settings. This is something you can play with once you get a lot of people on a call, as well as the together mode and the gallery at the top and the focus on content. Full screen mode is just gives you an opportunity to just go into full screen mode and you can just take it off if you don't want to do full screen mode. And then you can apply background setting. Now this is something pretty cool that you can play with. If you want your backgrounds to blur out, you can just hit preview and this will kind of show you your background blurred out. So I can just apply this to my video and now I'm on my call with my background blurred out. And if I really wanted to, if I was working in an office space or an environment where it was okay to, you know, just kind of let your hair down, then this is an instance where you would change your background settings to something like this and just uh, be on a call and, and, and just be yourself, an inclusive environment. So those are some of the things that you can play with. They have a lot of different things that you can add as well as next we have turn on live captions. Now, this is an instance where if you are doing something like a, a TED talk or you just know that there are a lot of people on the call and there's a possibility that some people may lose audio or don't have audio on their machines and they still want to kind of pay attention to what's going on, even though they may not be able to hear you. This is an opportunity where you can kind of turn on the captions and this will actually, as you can see, the words popping up here. This will actually try to figure out what you're saying to give the people listening an opportunity to hear you. All right, so let's just turn that off. The last thing is incognito, turn off incognito video. This right here is kind of a way. So when you join teams, you can say, turn my video on right away. Or when you join teams, you say join teams with my camera off and then let me decide whether I want to turn my camera on or keep my camera off. Next on the list is emojis. So these emojis right here gives you an opportunity to raise your hand. So if somebody's talking and you don't really want to cut them off, what you can do is just click on raise your hand. This turns this highlights your border yellow and it also gives an indication to the speaker or the people on the call that, hey, I may have a question. There's something that I can add here. You can also use these emojis. You have one that's surprised and when you click it, it just kind of populates. Ooh, didn't know she was going to say that. Or you have a laughing emoji because somebody says something funny, but you really don't want to come off of mute and laugh. You have an applause emoji because somebody just kind of gave a milestone update and that's something that you want to celebrate. You have a love emoji because somebody really spoke great or spoke well or gave somebody some props. So good job, team effort. And then you have a like emoji because you agreed to something that something somebody may have somebody should have said a long time ago or something like that. I'm just trying to think of anything. But that is that. Next, you have your show conversation. So this is an opportunity. So if people mics and stuff like that aren't working right here, you can say hello to people without having to interrupt the person that's talking or talk over someone and just kind of communicate through that. In the chat window, there's a few features that they have. So one is the GIF and I'll just say accept. So this is an opportunity to kind of use some GIFs and say happy birthday. So, you know, just telling somebody happy birthday and they have a lot of cool things that you can play around with and pick and choose from. Just click enter and it shoots it over or you can do some ideas 
or you just wanted to be creative with your hello and boom so that's an opportunity for you to use that they also have emojis down here that's kind of expanded so now you have a you have access to all the different emojis and if somebody's just want to be expressive from an emoji standpoint this is an opportunity where you can go down to the emojis and use some of those emojis so boom that's how you do that next on our list is attachments so if somebody's on a call and they just saying hey i have that document right here and they want to just go ahead and share some type of documentation or something real quick this is an opportunity where they can just kind of pick a file share that file say so anyone can see it and boom now everybody has access to that documentation and you was able to share it real quick while you was on the call another thing you can do is change up your format so say i was just typing hello and i wanted to kind of let everybody know that i meant hello so this is the opportunity where i can just kind of change it to bold change it to italic underline it cross it out or do a text highlighter so I can just highlight my hello and I can change my color. And then if I click on these ellipses, I can increase the size to large or I can indent, I can bullet list it and I can also quote it. So there's a number of different things you can do. You can insert a table if you want to quickly do a table and show somebody a table demonstration or you're just trying to give them a better example of something or you can kind of mark it as important. So those are some of the things that you can do in the chat function while you're on a team's call. Last but not least, show participants. So when you're on a call and there's a lot of people there and you just expecting certain people to be on that call or you want to find somebody real quick without having to say, hey, is such and such on the call you can just kind of click on participants here and kind of scan through those names real quick and see if that person is on the call and if they're on the call you can go ahead and give them a shot now before we leave out there's one last thing i want to show you guys so there is a difference between sharing your screen and sharing a particular window as well as if you're going to share a window that's going to play any sound you want to make sure that you turn on sound and then you share that particular window so that the people can hear the sound. All right, so let's go ahead and end that call. All right, now that we've ended that call, let's dive into the calendar. So in a calendar, it's just like any other calendar. You can kind of plan some meetings, set some things up, let people know what's going on. So let's just go through a few calendar features. So the original layout of your calendar is gonna be in this work week format. So it's gonna go between the hours of the day to the end of the day, as well as the days of the, the days that consist in the week. So Monday through Friday. So if you wanted to change that, you can change this to a day calendar where it's just going to show you anything that's happening for the particular day. And you can change that day by just clicking on this April column right here and then just changing that day to whatever day you feel um, that you want to see you can also use these arrows to change the days to the next day and so on and so forth or you can just and if you're too if you get lost you can use this column this tab right here clicking on today and you can kind of get back very quickly the next thing you can do is show the, the entire week so sunday to saturday this gives you an opportunity to even to look at some things on the weekend if you have something that you want to plan on the weekend now what about setting up a meeting to set up a meeting is pretty simple. You can come here, say new meeting. You can say, I want this meeting to be just an update. Update meeting. Then you can enter the name of participants for that particular meeting. And I'm just going to use myself as an example. Next thing you want to do is you can come here and just say, ah, I want to get an update on the last day of the week. And I want to get that update first thing in the morning and it's just going to be a quick update doesn't have to repeat however if you want this to ever repeat or to have occurring days recurring days you can say every day of the week monday through friday you can say daily you can say weekly monthly yearly or you can come here and do a custom 
um, recurrence. So you can say start every day and repeat every three days, every two months, every three weeks, or every year. Any way you choose. Next thing you can do is you can set the location. So this is just a random location, 45 White House Drive, and I'm gonna say Atlanta, Georgia. This is my alma mater. <laughs> All right, so you can look that up and that'll kind of give you an indication where I went to high school. And then you can kind of type here in the body, yada, yada, yada. Once you have done that, you come here, say save. Since our meeting is in the morning, now we know that where to find our meeting at. Now that we've gotten this meeting created and because we created this meeting in Teams, this automatically gives a Teams link to join a video call whenever this meeting is had. So you can kind of create the meeting and then decide on who all you want to share this meeting with. You can kind of do that by, well, the first way you can do this is right here. When you click on the meeting, you can click on this right here and share this to individuals that you feel like should come to the meeting. Or you can come back here after you created the meeting and just add those extra participants or people that you want to invite to this particular meeting you can close that down and on the day of the meeting all you have to do is open it up click join the camera is set to off because remember we changed this to incognito off whenever we log on to teams so that we're just not on camera right away just in case we need to gussy up or get ready and another thing you can do kind of told you with the background filters you can come here change the background to something that's something that's fun and then you can join your meeting i hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial on how to use teams if you're a teams user and if you just got teams and you want to start scaling your business or just become some type of consulting firm where you're doing bi on the side or something like that or if you're just new to teams and you're just trying to figure out all the things that you can do in teams hope this video is helpful for you make sure you subscribe Make sure you hit that thumbs up. Make sure you leave a comment down in the comment section on videos and tutorials that you guys may want to see in the future. My name is Carl, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's continue to learn on the go as we grow. Peace.